So today, so today is Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinity Sunday. Sunday. Um, and, and it's, it's a Sunday where there is an opportunity for pastors to share some of the stuff they learned in seminary with you. Um, and, and it's an opportunity for us to bore you to death. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I wrote a paper on the, the, the Trinity in systematic theology. What type of systematic, systematic theology? theology? I, wrote I wrote a paper, paper once on baptism that I thought, I thought was really good. good. And, and my, my professor sent it back to me and said, you need to rewrite this. And so I wrote a paper on the Trinity that I thought was really bad. I really didn't understand what I wrote. But I turned it in 10 pages and I got back A++, best paper you've ever read. Um, so I don't really understand it still what I wrote, so I'm not going to share that with you today. Instead, I want to talk about something that I think is a little, a little bit more easy, easy to understand. to understand. A little, a little bit more important, important even. Uh, John 3.16, everybody, everybody knows John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have, have eternal life. life. And Christians are really good about sharing John 3.16. We want to share John 3.16 with the world. What about John 3.17? I actually like John 3.17 better. And it's not a verse that anyone knows. For the Son of Man did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Christians are really good at condemning the world. I, uh, in the last month, have heard Christian leaders say two things that have kind of made me scratch my head. The, the first, first this, this, just this, this week, a religious, religious leader in Louisiana said, all the storms and all the tornadoes are God's judgment on the United States for accepting homosexuality. A couple weeks ago, I heard a pastor here in South Lake say that the world we are living in today is in, in such, such bad, bad shape, shape because, because of, of abortion. abortion. And, and I thought, well, well first off, I don't think the world's in that bad of shape. And I'm, and I'm pro baby, baby but man, man you're, you're putting, putting a lot of stuff on God, God right, right there. there. And, then and then I read this the Son of Man did not come into the world to condemn the world, but, but to save. save the world. And if, and if we, we look at how Jesus reacted to people who were sinners, it might change, change the way we talk about what God is doing right now. I think, I think there's three important stories in the Gospels of Jesus interacting with sinners. Three important stories that we often forget. There was a woman who was caught in adultery. And the, the people of the city drove her to a cliff with rocks in their hands and they were going to stone her. And, and Jesus, Jesus walked up, up and, they and they said, Jesus, Jesus you're a teacher of the law. We're, we're supposed to stone her, right? And Jesus says, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And then Jesus turned away, and one by one their rocks hit the ground as they turned and walked away. And after they had all left, Jesus turned to the woman and said, is there no one left to condemn you? And she said, no, sir, they've all left. Jesus said, I don't, I don't condemn, condemn you either. There's, There's another story of Jesus walking through a village, and he sees a guy in, in a tree named Zacchaeus, just, just wanting to get a look at Jesus. Jesus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He would, he would go, go around and collect the taxes for the government, and he'd, and he'd also collect some taxes for himself. himself. And he, he, would, he would steal from people. people. And so, so Jesus said, I want to go to your house. Let's go to your house. And he spent an afternoon with Zacchaeus, Eating, eating lunch. lunch. And, he and he talks to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus and they talk about all kinds of things. And at, and at the, end the end of the conversation, he says, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your house today. today. He, he said this to a woman caught in adultery. And he, and he said, said this to a thief. Said, I, I do not condemn you. you. Salvation has come to your house today. today. And when he's hanging on the cross, he's looking down at the men who are mocking him. At the, at the men who actually, actually put him on the cross, who drove the stakes into his arms and into his legs. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. 
Jesus, Jesus doesn't, doesn't come across as the kind of guy who condemns, condemns people. people. Jesus, Jesus doesn't, doesn't come across as the kind of guy who pronounces, pronounces that God is judging you because it's raining. On, on, a, on Thursday, Thursday, I came, I came to the office a little after, after 10, 10 and uh, poor, poor Iris Beck, Beck was sitting, sitting outside the women's stitches room looking in, and I thought, well, why isn't Iris, Iris walking in? in? <laughs> and, I and I walked over there, and she said, well, the door doesn't work. I said, what do you mean the door doesn't work? She said, well, the handle has disengaged from the deadbolt, and you can't open the door. And I thought, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, let's go in the back door. The same thing happened in the back door. So... There was, there, was many, there was half of maybe, maybe ten women, women inside, inside the women in stitches, stitches room who were, were locked in. in. <laughs> they, they couldn't get, get out and nobody, nobody could get in. in. So, so Susie, Susie climbed out the window and she, and she thought, well, well, if I come on the outside, I can get it open. open. And, and so, so we, tried, we, tried, we tried We tried taking the pins out of the door. We tried working with the handle. It wouldn't work. So we went around to the back and we thought, well, maybe the back door. Maybe we can get the back door to work. We couldn't get it to work. So, so there were literally women on the inside trapped, and Pastor Nick, trying to be Captain America, could not get them out. And so um, there was a handle, and we needed a, an Allen wrench. So I didn't have an Allen wrench, but I had a hammer. So, so I tried. So I tried that. Um, and, and, and that didn't work. work. And then, and then I, I had the idea, well, well if, if I, I go inside, inside I, can I can help them out. Them out. So, so there are certain advantages to being big. big. Climbing, Climbing through windows, windows is not one of them. <laughs> um, I, think I think Barb Morell has the video. video. <laughs> um, so, so I climb in, and I, and I, think, I think, well, now that I'm in, I'll be able to get them out. But then I went to the door, and I thought, oh, yeah, you're inside. You can't get out. So... So, so I tried, tried and, and I got the handle off, off but the deadbolt was still stuck in the door. door. And, and I thought, well, what if I just took the door apart? And, and, and finally, after, after, I don't know, an hour, figured it out and got, got everybody out. out. It, was it was quite an experience. An experience. <laughs> Things, Things that they, they don't, don't tell, teach you at seminary. But I thought to myself, you know, this is what happens to a lot of us. When we sin, when we make mistakes, the, the shame, shame and, and the guilt, guilt is locked in. We don't, we don't share that with anybody because we're, we're too ashamed, ashamed to talk about it. And we're, we're afraid to let, to let it go. go. But hear, but hear these, these words. words. Father, Father, forgive them. I do not condemn you. Salvation, Salvation has come to your house today. today. Jesus died so that you can let go of the shame and the guilt of the things that you've done. Today is a good day to let it go. And please, do me just this one favor. As you let it go, as you feel God's grace flowing through you, share that grace with others. And, and do not, not tell, tell anybody, anybody that the rain is this guy's hatred. Amen. <laughs>